This is KGW News at Sunrise. Gun violence in Portland shows no signs of slowing down, with shootings fast approaching record levels. We hear from someone caught in the middle of the latest shooting. I just couldn't believe that it didn't hit me because it was aimed directly at my face. Also this morning, we have an update for you on a problem that local restaurants have been struggling with for months now, finding people to fill their staff. This morning, there is some good news. There's some hope on the horizon. And then coming up later on Sunrise, see how biologists down in Southern Oregon are rebuilding salmon habitats by using things that a wildfire destroyed. All right, before we get to Rod Hill's first look at today's weather this hour, we take a look outside. Ooh, yes. What do you see? I see city lights, Rod Hill. Very good. Some clouds. I Very see good. some clouds. I actually mm -hmm. saw a little bit of a rainfall on my windshield. I, I mean, it was too. the lightest amount of rain you could possibly have. It's just, just, just above no rain. There's like no <laughs> rain, and then there's the rain that fell on my windshield, but it was rain. You know what we call that? What do you call it? That's a dab. All right, let's get you going. We have temperatures outside this morning that generally are holding about 60 because of what Drew and Brenda mentioned. Clouds, some traces of rainfall around. Remember, there was that little system last night that brushed us to the north. Uh, 59 in Happy Valley, 61 out in Camas. Uh, same thing down in the Mid Valley. In fact, Salem, good morning. If you step outside right now, you're in the mid 60s at 65. So bus stop weather. We think during the morning hours, these clouds will actually start to break up. So a mix of kind of clouds and sun, depending on location at the bus stop this morning, about 59 degrees in the seven o'clock hour. Fairly cool for this time of the year at lunchtime, 66, and then a nice partly cloudy and 73. And the kids say, I'm finished. Get me home. And that's your forecast. There you go. We'll talk later. Thank you, Rod. We begin this morning with the latest on gun violence in Portland, and we're hearing from a Portland woman almost hit by gunfire during a shooting Monday night. This happened near Southeast 72nd in Woodstock around 9 p.m. Erica Wilson and her 13 year old son were driving when her car was hit by bullets twice. One came in through the back hatch and it went out through the front windshield. A Portland Parks and Recreation truck was also hit. Police say whoever did this fired at least 26 shots. I guess I'm just thankful that nobody was hurt. It's sad what's happening. I know that a lot of officers are getting are quitting because it's just the way that it is right now. And then that doesn't leave a lot, you know, for the people that are, are, are trying to do their jobs, you know, because it took six minutes before 911 dispatchers answered. And it took another like 10, 15 minutes before they showed up, it felt like. Police say so far this year, the city has had more than 870 shootings. To put that in perspective, there were 891 shootings in all of last year and 388 the year before that. Now to the latest on the pandemic and how bad the situation is right now in Southern Oregon. Some counties in that part of the state, or that part of the state that is, are struggling right now with how to handle COVID deaths. Two weeks ago, we talked about Josephine County having to borrow a refrigerated trailer just to hold the bodies of people who died with COVID. That's because of the surge in deaths there. The County Office of Emergency Management says it typically has anywhere between seven to 11 bodies in that refrigerated trailer at a time. But now the county has to return the truck by the end of the week. I have asked the state to see if they can identify an additional alternate trailer to bring down and have pre-staged and pre-planned again. So Joseph, uh, Josephine County is hoping that the state of Oregon can help out. If the state can't help, the community there will have to find other arrangements. The Office of Emergency Management is talking with neighboring counties and looking to expand the morgue there in the long term. Officials say of Josephine County's COVID deaths, 87% involve people who aren't vaccinated. As for hospitalizations across the state, you can see from this graph, the number of people hospitalized has leveled off. It's even started to drop a little bit. 1,082 COVID patients. That's the number we saw as of last night. As for ICU beds, we know only 48 are available throughout the entire state, which makes up about 7% of Oregon's ICU beds. 
Oregon OSHA is looking into a Southern Oregon school district after getting complaints it violated COVID guidelines. The Winston Dillard School District is just south of Roseburg. Students there did not have in-person learning yesterday. The district said three teachers resigned in the past few days, but they didn't say why. It's still unclear whether the complaints are even related to the teachers' resignations, but all three complaints accuse the district of not enforcing COVID safety measures. One of the complaints includes an allegation that the employer is not enforcing or requiring the use of face masks coverings by employees. Um, and so the complaints um, fall along those lines in terms of the need, you know, alleging that there's a lack of um, following the requirements to protect uh, workers uh, against um, exposure to COVID-19. OSHA says its inspection could take several weeks and it will make those findings public. Well, this is big news for families with younger kids. There could be a COVID vaccine for five to 11 year olds by Halloween. Pfizer says it's really close to asking for that emergency use authorization. And after that, the FDA will evaluate the benefits and the risks. It's a process that could take a matter of weeks. Multiple health experts that we're hearing from say that they do expect Pfizer to to get that authorization by the end of next month. We have one more story related to COVID here because the pandemic and a labor shortage both continue to make it challenging for Oregon restaurants to stay open. But as Joe Ranieri found out, there could be hope on the horizon. One thing restaurants have been during this pandemic, resilient. It's uh, been a roller coaster of a year and a half and we thought it was going to get better once the vaccinations came and, and July was great. We had, um, you know, a pretty busy July. But since then, people have been staying away in part to the surge of the Delta variant. Owner Rob Lutz says it's also been challenging to find people who want to work. We'll find a candidate here or there and uh, a lot of times their, their availability is maybe not what we have. Um, we have a lot of people applying that don't show up to interviews. Just down the street at Broder Nord. We opened July 1st. We had a really rough time trying to find people to work for us, um, mainly back of house. Front of house, we had a good mix of people that came in. Um, but yeah, finding chefs, dishwashers, prep cooks was not easy for us for a long time. It's the same situation all over the city. Diane Schuler owns Grant's Philly Cheese Steak in the Pearl District. When you get an application, you almost take the first thing you can get because who knows when you're going to be able to get another person. So why has it been such a challenge for restaurants? A lot of it's been going back to school and like wanting to get out of the service industry, not wanting to be in food anymore. The reduced workforce has also impacted food deliveries even when restaurants are able to open. Some have cut back hours while others have had a temporarily close, like this Burgerville location along Highway 99 in Tigard. Many think a lot of it has to do with people living off unemployment, but others disagree. We've raised our, our wages well above what they'd be getting, um, even with a bonus. Um, there's also, you know, uh, you know, tips that go out to the kitchen and it's well above what they would be making on unemployment. While restaurant owners continue to find ways to stay open, the president and CEO of the Oregon Restaurant and Lodging Association, Jason Brandt, says he's slowly seeing improvement. We have seen some applications tick up and this is anecdotal we haven't seen data yet from the employment department but we do believe that more people are applying for jobs since labor day weekend in the meantime restaurants will continue to do what they can and hold out for hope these tables will soon fill up again joe ranieri kgw news well hundreds of homes burn down every year during wildfires and animals homes are no exception to restore damaged fish habitats in southern Oregon, biologists are reusing burned trees from the Almeda fire. The Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife is taking burned logs from a trailer park in the town of Phoenix and bringing them to the Upper Rogue Basin. Steelhead and coho salmon are common there. I see this as, you know, an area that was just decimated from wildfire and to be able to bring bring those logs to a site that we are trying to restore and rehabilitate and create some good things for wildlife and, and our native fish. It's been really cool. Yeah, it is. That habitat that they're trying to rehab is hot and shallow right now. The logs will help slow down the water, provide shade, 
and create deep pools of water for the fish to breed in. That is very interesting. Total recycling there. Yeah, that's the word I was thinking of. The cycle of right. life, as they say. Right? And the other thing that that area is going to get soon, yes. at least in the next few days, yes. is rain. I feel like, you know, I've been off the last couple of days and just, boy, the buzz on social media and listening to the news uh, has been all about the rain coming this Friday, Saturday, Sunday. If you have plans, I know. But overall, this is terrific news, and that's where I begin. So we have a great day coming today and tomorrow, and I'll get into that in a moment. But here's the latest on the weekend rain. Friday at 5 p.m., notice this does not show much of any measurable rainfall inland, and that's the big question. It's certainly possible we get light rain developing Friday morning, but it's also possible we don't see much of anything until the main front comes in Friday evening. And right now, I'm just not sure which way that goes. I, if I had to bet, I would say yes. We get some Friday daytime rain, and then we get the heavy rain band Friday evening. So that first rain band could give Portland over half of an inch. This is basically what falls Friday night into Saturday morning. Gives Salem nearly an inch, according to this model. All forecast models pretty much show similar numbers, by the way. So there's a second batch of heavy, steady rain with a second front Sunday morning. So when it's all said and done for the weekend, this shows 1.35 inches in Portland, over 2 inches in Astoria. Shows over 2 inches of rain down in Eugene. So this is absolutely going to be at least a soaker, right? So kind of what I just talked about here. By the way, the snow level for Saturday and Sunday behind that first front gets down to between six and 7,000 feet. That means there could be some snow at uh, Timberline Lodge. All right, temperatures this morning, 40 out in Baker City, but here on the west side we have clouds and we're at 60 or better from Kelso down into Eugene. And with skies becoming partly cloudy today, we'll be in the 70s. This shows Salem 74, it shows uh, Kelso Longview up to about 70. I have Portland at 73. Tomorrow's just mostly sunny and 75. And then 60s with the rain this weekend, all dry on Monday. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday, mwah, 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 right? That's my way of saying the rain is good news. <laughs> now we got to have an engineer run in there and kind of wipe, wipe those it down. smudges <laughs> off the screen. But uh, point well made there, Rodney Hill. Uh, we'll have more from Rod, of course, coming up in just a few minutes. But next up on Sunrise, NASA's plan to prepare for a mission to the moon by hanging out in Central Oregon. We're going to explain why Central Oregon seems to be the best place to get an astronaut ready to visit the moon. But first, experts verify why it is important for pregnant women to get the COVID vaccine. That story right after this break. 